Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wild On. Today's guest is Leon. You may recognise him from playing with Demise Academy and Salt Eye Esports. Today we're going to talk about his time playing various competitive leagues from Belong to UKEL and then most recently NLC. As you can hear, I'm currently a bit under the weather. Please bear with me and feel sorry for me as we get through this episode. Okay, Leon. What's your full name, your online handle, your age, and where did you grow up? Uh, my full name's Leon Lan. Uh, my online handle is just Leon. Um, I didn't really have any nicknames growing up or anything, so I just used my name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm 27, and I grew up in Glasgow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how did you find out about League of Legends? Um, back in the day, I used to be a card and fifa player like just on the ps3 mm-hmm. and i'd watch like a lot of card youtubers and one of them was called like muzza fuzzer and he played he like just randomly uploaded a league of legends video and i was like this game looks a bit weird i'll try it out and yeah i think that's the first time i like played it right okay so and this what season was this was this like season one or two uh i think it was season okay. one because I, I remember watching the season two world finals with uh type assassins oh yeah and and i'm pretty sure i played before that so i think i started playing like season one at some point i don't know when exactly mm-hmm. and did you stick with it then or did you kind of like did you drop it um, and then pick it up later on or what because it was that it's a different game from what uh-huh. it is now right yeah yeah um at the time i remember playing it and i, I don't really i don't really remember exactly but i remember playing it but i'd rather play cod and fifa at a time mm-hmm. i just thought they were way more fun mm-hmm. was um, this like cod like modern warfare or modern warfare uh, 2 I think it was Modern Warfare 2. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, what a game, honestly. <laughs> I'm not I'm not surprised. Like yeah. that was amazing back in the day. Probably the best game ever. Yeah. What what was your first experience like then? Like do you remember how you felt like the learning um, curve of the game or anything? Yeah, I remember you had the uh, tutorial at the start mm-hmm. where you're like Ash. And you had to build a Ford mail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I remember after my first game, I saw I was like still level one. Because like in the game, I was, I was like, you know, you go up to like level 18 in the actual game. Mm-hmm. So I must have been like level 15, I'm guessing. And the right. game ended. And then I see that I'm still like level one. So I'm like, what the hell did my, did the game not save? this? <laughs> Why am I still level one? Right. Um, but then, you know, after a while, I remember playing like Heimerdinger. Because he was in the the weekly rotation, and then the next day, I couldn't see him anymore because uh, the champ swap out for the rotation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was like, "What I do? I need to play a brand new champion." <laughs> um, so yeah, like back then, I didn't I didn't understand the game at all. I was just like playing it because it was something different. Because I've I've always been like an FPS player, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. You play jungle. Uh, what made you decide to pick up this role? Um, I don't know why I picked jungle up. To be honest, like I remember, I used to main Warwick, old Warwick, where mm-hmm. his ult was just a just a blank, like right? teleported on. Yeah, yeah you yeah. just suddenly <laughs> like on top of them. Um, but he was like, oh, I played like Master Yi as well a little bit. Mm-hmm. But like I, I used to like main mid. And top, I used to play at Casting and Lux mm-hmm. mid lane and Renekton and Nasus top. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I think season five or season six, uh, I started playing Kazix, and I was just for some reason I was like really good on them, they mm-hmm. like just popping off, even though I didn't really know how to jungle. Right. So then, I think season six I started playing a lot more solo queue. And I started just one trick in Kazix, and I got like that was my first season. I got diamond, I think. Mm-hmm. So I just stuck with it after that. Right, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, just found that champion that you really liked, and then that was it. You were like, yeah, let's let's play rank then. 
Yeah, pretty much. And then after that, what made you decide to play a wall competitively? Um, I heard of Belong in like, I want to say 2019 winter. Mm-hmm. I think that's the first time I heard. I didn't really, like, I used to watch a lot of pro play and stuff, but I didn't really, I didn't really think there was, like, a UK scene or, like, a Scottish scene mm-hmm. that, I, I, that I had heard of. So, uh, yeah, when I first heard of Belong, then I was like, okay, I'll try out for that. It sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I met you. Like, was that when you were sub with Team Fire, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that thing. So, and it wasn't like, um, how did you hear about it? Was it like on Facebook or something uh, like that? An advert you got? Or like you did, I think you my brother mentioned it. it. Oh, right, okay, your brother. He mentioned it. I was like, okay, I'll look it up, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, and then there were like qualifiers. So I just showed up to that. Mm-hmm. Does your uh, brother play at all? Or? No, I no. tried to get him to play, but uh, he doesn't really like it. Right, okay, fair enough. Okay. Um. Yeah, so that leads us on. Oh, okay. Were you competitive in any other games or sports before? No. Like, I I think I used to play game battles for COD. Okay. Like, right. I think I did it once. But I didn't really enjoy it, to be right. honest. Okay. Um. So, what about the different tournaments or leagues that you've played in? Is Belong the first one there? Yeah, Belong's the first one. Um, so I showed up to the qualifiers. I remember I was like master. I I think I think because I was the master, people were like, um, not whispering but like talking about me. Like, <laughs> oh, like oh, shit, maybe this guy's master guy. <laughs> master guy. Maybe this guy's like a big deal. <laughs> um, I got paired up with like a bunch of silver and gold players. Mm-hmm. Who were like um, just randomly showed up, I think. Mm-hmm. So after the games, um, I I don't know if I was like offered a sub spot on Team Fire. Mm-hmm. I think I I think that's how it worked. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. And then uh, I didn't get to play any games until the quarterfinals when they were down one 0 and then they wanted to sub unite for me, just to like mix things up, I guess. But I hadn't played with them before that, so it was a bit uh, weird and like out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I remember that first game. I was against Fuyu, who later on became my teammate on the Mize Academy. Mm-hmm. Right. And then uh, I remember I was so nervous that I'd have my pink ward on like one or two, and I just like randomly pushed down on it by accident. <laughs> And just randomly like pink place a pink cord in like the middle of the lane. Oh. <laughs> um I got interrupted. <laughs> okay. Uh what was I saying? I I randomly yeah, just randomly like place pink cords in the middle of the lane mm-hmm. and stuff. And then <clears throat> Fuyu was playing Jinx and we were doing Dragon. Mm-hmm. And uh I don't know if someone said that you would care of the Jinx ult, but I was like, okay, it's a free dragon, they're not contesting. But then a Jinx ult just hits me in the face, <laughs> steals the dragon. Oh, man. I try and, I try and smite after it, <laughs> but I accidentally fat finger my flash, so I end up just <laughs> flashing on the spot <laughs> as well. But oh, uh, we end up God. winning that game somehow. Okay. And then we end up winning the next game as well. So... um. Yeah, I remember the first time Morgan met me. He was uh he was like, Oh, it's it's Leon, the the guy who uh did something for Team Fire and uh like won the game. <laughs> but then in the semis, uh they were down one now again. I get subbed in and we just lost. <laughs> All right. So just... yeah, it kinda sucks to like get fourth place, but mm-hmm. um it's it's a pretty good experience. Yeah, yeah. Then so the next split was uh when I played with you mm-hmm. and what was it? it was you you taught uh, me Jumbo, Roy. Roy Mid uh Callum ADC and Alpha, Alpha. Alpha and, Andy. Yeah. and that was pretty fun yeah like I think we were undefeated right yeah yeah before right. 
before COVID. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much ruined oh. it. Yeah, I was so annoyed because we only got like twenty pound prize money, I think. Yeah, yeah. We're, I and think we, we, we really got way more quarters or semi finals. It was something like that. I think we just stomped the groups, yeah. uh-huh. and then uh, like there was all the rumours about uh, closing down and things like that. And I, mm-hmm. I remember the last day it's very vividly like what we were doing and just how everyone was because there was a big crowd of us used to go back then. And yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, I just felt like that. So, like, when uh, you were playing, when you were playing in um, the Challenger League with Team Fire, did you see a lot of names that came back in, uh, like, UKL, like you mentioned, uh, for you? Was there other people um, that you recognised, like, even you didn't play against, but uh, watching the games or being the sub like that you that you knew later on. Uh, I remember. I think Devonis was like played in the finals against Team Fire at one point. Mm-hmm. But like Officer Naughty, mm-hmm. I don't think they were the same team to us. But I've heard of both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard of a lot of names. I can't really think of them like right now. But I remember London's team was like stacked. Like right. I. I've, I pretty much knew three of the five players like later on, right? Okay. Because they played on like UKLC kind of stuff. Right, right, cool, nice. Um, so after Belong, this is COVID times. Or did you did you do like other tournaments alongside Belong? Oh yeah. Or... Uh, not alongside, but after mm-hmm. Belong, so like the summer of twenty twenty, mm-hmm. I want to say, um. Me and Morgan went LFT, like in the UK scene, mm-hmm. and I ended up getting trials for Realm Gaming, which uh, Coach also got trials for. But um, at the end of it, I only got offered a sub spot mm-hmm. for Jungle, because we do like internal five v fives, so like the ten players who are on trials, uh, mm-hmm. just like play against each other, and the other jungler would like. I remember he'd play like Philippe Gragas and just like shit on me, like just a one shot me sometimes. Right. Okay, wow. And and then after that, I got the Mize Academy trials. Yeah. Um, and then my first game, the coach was like, uh, "Lee Sun looks good here." I was like, "Okay, I'll play Lee Sun. I can play that champ." Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember like dying super early and just being useless the entire game. All right. And then like. T- Two days later, I had another trial with them. Uh, Morgan played before that, like literally the game before that, and he picked Volley Bear. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think this was new Volley Bear, and I had never played the chat before, but I've seen him in, a lot in pro play. And he'd go like uh, support items, so like Locket, Knight's Five, Redemption. So after Morgan's game, I was like, I'll just do the same thing. I'll pick Volley Bear here, mm-hmm. I'll just go like full support, and I ended up working out really well, mm. and uh, uh, like a few days later, they offered me the spot on the main team. And then, uh, we had like two or three weeks. No wait, so our roster was supposed to be JoJo top, me jungle. I forgot who the mid was supposed to be, but it'd be slated, AD and Dandy support, mm. with Kybit, coach. But then our, our mid laner couldn't play. I forgot why. So we ended up getting mirrored. It was insane. And then we like tried for like two or three weeks before the UK EL qualifiers. Mm-hmm. And we were playing pretty well, to be honest. Like, I think it was really fun just scrimming better teams. Like, I remember we scrimmed. Galaxy X Racers female team. Mm-hmm. So, like Tifa and all them. And, like, yeah, at the time it was just cool, like, scrimming people that we knew of or, like, that I knew of, but I haven't, like, played against. Mm-hmm. Um, going into the tournament, uh, we played against Boston's team in the first game. He was called Pure Juice back then. I mm-hmm. think it was Pure Juice. Um, ended up 2 1 in them. Game two, we played against Realm Gaming, so the guys who offered me the sub spot. Uh, 
we end up 2 1 in them with like an insane base race in the second game. Mm -hmm. Where if we lost, then we'd be at the tournament. Um, and Little Pants was on that team as well, who I would also play later on on a Demise Academy. Right, okay, yeah. Uh, game three, I think it was Pivilis' team. And we. Oh, no, no, it's Kevman's team. Yeah, the Irish guy. We end up 2 1 in them. And then I remember after the fourth game. So we qualify for like the promotion relegation thing. So like the four top teams mm -hmm. play each other in like a, a, a weird style. I, think, I don't know what it's called, but like you have to win two games basically to qualify. Mm -hmm. But the day before, my neighbor is cutting the grass. No, he's chopping the tree down <laughs> beside their house. He ends up, I don't know how, he ends up like cutting the Ethernet wire outside oh, the house. No. And then, <laughs> I think it's during COVID. So, like, I think COVID was like the, the lockdown was a little softer. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, oh, okay, do I have to go to like town? Do I need to go to the summoners to play this game or mm -hmm. like Belong? Mm -hmm. I think Belong was like just shut though. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I was like, uh, I told my teammates and we were like, oh, maybe we need a sub. Maybe we can postpone the game. Mm -hmm. But um, my other neighbor somehow ends up like sellotaping the wires back together and it still worked. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. Um, so I was like, okay, uh, it was a close one. <laughs> uh, we end up winning the promotion relegation, the little four-man team tournament thing pretty convincingly. I think we 2 old both teams. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think it's kind of insane we went undefeated in that whole run, considering we were, like, a new team. Um, but, yeah, it was, like, super fun, like, just playing with these guys. And then... Uh, it was, like... We had, like, five months, I think, till we played the actual UK EL. But um, a bunch of, like, weird stuff happened, so the team... The whole roster kind of like blew up, right? Um, so I was like the only person left on the team who was on the team before. Mm -hmm. So we ended up trialing. I think we started trials around late November, and they finished uh, early January. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty long time. Like we're just trialing through Christmas. Um, um, we end up getting a sent up. Uh, me jungle, Kurosh mid, Fuyu, AD, and Little Pan support. And I think, I don't know what happened, I don't know why, but we were like just nuts at like team fighting for some mm -hmm. reason. Like, I feel like that was probably the best team I've ever been on. Um, and there was a lot of hype around us because. Uh, people were saying like the academy team is better than the main team. All right. At the yeah. time. Wow. Like, I don't know if we were. Uh, it's hard to say if you were. Like, like you know, if we were in the league above, would we do better? But considering how like bad they did, I, I'd, I'd say so. Um, then the actual league starts. Uh, our top laner in like week three, our top laner doesn't want to play anymore because he wants to get paid. Okay. to play the game because he's like a challenger mm. <clears throat> so that kind of sucked and like after that it all went a bit downhill <clears throat> I mean we still got first place in the spring in the what would you call it, like a group stage mm -hmm. with a group format um, but then in the playoffs we only got second right, okay. which kind of sucked wow man unfortunate so. uh but yeah, it's pretty good. Like just playing against a lot of players that uh I recognized and I knew was like really cool. Mm -hmm. Like the Heaven who played in SEL five. Yeah. Uh Kimikum, Victorio, Master of Donnery. <laughs> um I was just like a lot of people that I've, I I know. Um so playing against them was really cool. Uh and after that split, I didn't bother trialing. 
Right. Uh, I think Demise, because Demise, Demise is main team relegated. They offered me, or they were curious if I was going to play another spot. Mm-hmm. I said no because I didn't think I'd get paid for it. It's not worth the time investment. Mm-hmm. Like how much? Uh, how many scrims per week? Like how much uh, investment was involved? Like to play at that level, and uh, what they expecting from you? Uh, we were doing like, I think it was four scrims a week. Okay. Wow. And then another day for like vod review. Right. Um, and then after scrims, I wanted like personal coaching, so we had like a. We had a coach, an analyst, who and a, who was also a positional positional coach, mm-hmm. uh, another positional coach, and another analyst, I think. So, like, once we started, <coughs> once we got a new top laner and we weren't like as good as we were, I started to want um, like uh, positional coaching. So I ended up getting that like after scrims, I would just go in. Uh, get the replay, send it to them, and we just go over the the game. Mm-hmm. So like, like if you say scrims take, I want to say three hours. Sometimes yeah. they take three hours. Best of threes, like, right? Uh, Probably three hours. Um, right. We do like three games instead of best of three. Right. Okay. So, yeah, but let's say three hours because some people take way longer. Like, some people take the piss and like. Uh, VOD review like after each game right, individually. Okay. Right. So we take like three hours of scrims and then like an extra hour or an hour and a half just to go over the games. Right. Okay. So it's like four, yeah, four and a half hours. And we weren't getting paid for that. Yeah, it's a lot. Of time. So like going into the next one, I was like, maybe I could get trials for like UKLC teams. But I'd at, at best I'd probably make two hundred pounds a month, which isn't a lot. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't think it's worth it. Okay. okay. And then uh, uh, the next, like I was going to uh, say, gonna with say? these, uh, with UKEL and UKLC, is there like much overlap there? Like, how would you stack them up? Like, is UKLC the top one and UKL just like slightly down, or how do you think uh, the talent wise, uh, it goes? Um, at the time, UKLC was, I think, it was quite a big jump, in my opinion. Mm. Like all the, if any team got promoted from UKL to UKLC, at least the ones I saw, mm-hmm. they wouldn't do well. They would just be like bottom two next season. Right. Okay. So I think it's quite a big jump, and when you consider, there's more money for that league than the early league. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense that the better played, the better paid players would uh, perform a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, is think, that is that like Fnatic Rising and XL and these sorts uh, of things? I think they were in the league above. Right. Okay. Because uh, there was like NLC, which was UK and Nordic <laughs> teams. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think. So like they, you'd get like Fnatic Rising, mm. or like XL, uh, whatever they're called. But um, you'd still get a lot of decent players in Div One, <coughs> Div Two. Sorry, like No Name. I think mm. he's a really good jungler. He's like the best British jungler I can think of right now. Um, like Fu and Little Pants played in Div Two, and they did reasonably well, but like not like top three. Right. Okay. So yeah, I think that was quite a big jump. Okay. Right. Um, uh, so I think after... the next tournament was SL four. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I had like not retired from league, not not pulled the Roy boy, uh, <laughs> but like took a break. Okay. So when SL four came. I was like, yeah, I'll start playing League again. Like, trying to... I still played occasionally, but, like, I wasn't try-harding. Mm-hmm. So when I did play SEO 4, uh, there was a lot of, like, growing pains in Ranked, I guess, where 
I'm like losing games in low diamond. Mm -hmm. But like after a while, like it, it fixes itself. Mm -hmm. Like you get back into the old habits. So our team for that was Kosh, me, Trainee, Callum, and Patsy. Mm -hmm. How did you pick and... up Trainee? Like, because uh, he's someone that I only met from that team. Like, uh, he he wasn't really a person that was on the scene. How did uh -huh. he come around? Yeah, he was friends with Sophie. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they they worked on like the same uni project. I want right. to say okay. And Trainee's Trainee's kind of nuts. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he's he's having a hard time in diamond right now, but <laughs> he he's he's a lot better than his rank says. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's only four teams in SCL four, which kind of sucked. Mm -hmm. I think like eight teams signed up. Or, right. Like, there was quite a lot of teams who signed up, but like they didn't have full rosters, so they just kind of just didn't play. Right. Okay. Ah. Okay. Um. So like like Saltire had a team, which was. If they did play, would have won the entire thing, like mm -hmm. by far. Um, but like, I guess fortunately for us, they didn't play. Uh, like the team, like Disconnect would have played on it. It would have been Disconnect during. They were still looking for a mid. Mm -hmm. I mean, Disconnect was like flexing top mid at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and like Nabs and Achilles spot. Right. And they're both like insane. Mm -hmm. Um so, so are they Scottish players or are they like would they have been from outside? Um, just they kinda have three Scottish players and then two yeah, yeah. outside. So right? Nab's is Scottish. I think I don't know where Nab stays, but I know he's Scottish and he's like he played on in UK EL the the season after me. Okay. And he was like nuts. And right. so is Aklis. Aklis is from Kuwait, I want to say. Right. Okay. Right. And I I played with him like a few months ago because he was filling for an NLC game with Saltire, mm -hmm. and he's definitely like one of the best players I've played with. Like he's so insane. Right. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah, like SEO four comes round. I think we're favorites. Yeah, I think we're, we're favourites to win because the other two teams, so we had um, Scalp mm -hmm. with uh, Roy's team and then the other two teams were kind of gold players, yeah. gold and plat players. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we easily make the land finals. And I mean, getting to play land was really cool. I think that was my first land, like, ever. And I thought I'd be a lot more nervous than I than I was, like with the whole crowd. Mm -hmm. With um, you can hear like the commentators and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty easy or simple win. I don't know if that's it easy. Mm -hmm. I know game one of that finals is pretty close. Yeah, I actually sure. think I have a there's a few disagreements within. That at least the people I spoke to about game one. Right. I actually think if we didn't steal the Baron in game one, we would have lost. Yeah. No, but a lot of people disagree with me. Uh, it's hard to say. Like, it looks good for skill, but yeah. the start of the game, and then I don't know, there was maybe a few fumbles by then that allowed you back in, and then the Baron steal was maybe like the final nail in the coffin. Maybe I yeah, don't yeah. know. Yeah. Hard to say. Like, it was a while ago. Yeah, it's hard to say, but. Um... Yeah, games two and three were pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Techie Fiend being subbed in was definitely a curveball. I, mm -hmm. I knew I heard the name. I didn't like the way Esports Scotland handled it. Right. Because we only found out about it half an hour before the game. Yeah. And and I was the one who had to say, like, uh, do they have, like, a different midliner? Because... But Jessica wasn't there. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't so, a fan. Like, so at, they at the just kind of dropped on it. 
like just last minute or by the way, like they never even said that the player had changed. They just kind of went, ah, oh, you know, yeah, the game's yeah. going on as usual. Right, okay. Mm. So, so it was like, um, yeah, who's who's our new player? Can we get like an OPGG for him? Because we don't know who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember we actually, we were just like waiting around upstairs mm-hmm. and Flashy walks past us. And I think Kosh or... Kosh or Patsy asked him who their mid laner was. Mm. And he kind of just like stared at him for like a few seconds and just like walked off. <laughs> but like, I understand, like, uh, I'm more annoyed at the, the staff the who handled it, but it, it's whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think they uh, were just hoping that the finals would still go ahead. Like, uh, yeah. More than anything, so. Yeah, which is like, I think even if they had a sub, I'd still rather play. So there was like something on. Mm-hmm. Um, the next little small thing was the battlegrounds that SEO hosted mm-hmm. or Esports Scotland. Yeah. Um, going into the game, I actually didn't think we were favourites because uh, what were they called again? Techie Fiend had a team. I forgot they were what they were called. It was like something, something white. Uh, uh, and isn't Soltar right? Isn't. Is- is this maybe? Oh no, that was um, that was before that. Before this. Um. Was it team white? Maybe just team white. Maybe, but I actually thought they were favourites because right, okay. they had like Techie Donut GG Sapling Gober oh, yeah. <laughs> and some other guy. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I knew Donut was really good from the. Switcheroozies we used to play mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. Scalp. Even though he was like plat something, I, I mean, he might have been like plat four or mm-hmm. like plat one. And I knew, but like when I played against him, like you can tell when a player is good. The, like the eye Sometimes test. you can just tell, like, yeah yeah. yeah, 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 like, oh, this guy's doing all the right things. This guy's in the right place at the right time. Uh, he's not making any like stupid mistakes. And then I actually got to hear comms as well from those games Mm -hmm. and like he was pretty much what i wanted to be when i was playing on demise academy like the way he talked about the game the way he um like he was just saying everything that i would have wanted to say Mm -hmm. um so yeah going into that game i kind of knew we it'd be difficult even though we were all like diamond master players and they were like a few diamonds, techie, and like a plat player mm-hmm. or two plat players, and we end up losing. I think our draft was really bad, but uh, I still think we should have played better. Mm-hmm. Um, was this that like the wombo combo team comp? If I remember, like the Amu Amu and then Misfortune uh, or something like that, like I remember them being they kind of seem to pull I th- together. Think these... so. Kind of like big ultimate pieces, right? Uh-huh. And big setup pieces. Because I remember they had a Mumu Vegar <clears throat> Techie on. I don't know what Tech was playing, actually. I don't want to say. Mm-hmm. I was going to say Fresh, but I'm not sure. But yeah, like. Yeah, we just. We played badly. Like, I think a lot of times when people lose, they like blame draft or they blame. I don't know, like maybe someone played badly. But like that, that happens sometimes. So, mm-hmm. like when people lose, I'm more concerned of like the execution, because sure you could change draft, but you can like always play better, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, I remember people were, I don't want to say mocking, but like, I guess like making fun of us for losing to them. Right. But I. I mean, I think people don't realize how good Donut is, and I think it's expected to lose against them, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, you could say, like, uh, after the recent performances at SEL and different things, like, yeah, that I think it's maybe just people look at an OP.GG and they see, like, yeah. a, a rank, and then they think, oh, he's going to be this when... On, on yeah, he's paper, they want something, but, but like, they can be higher, right? Uh-huh. So. Um, 
the next tournament was SEL5. And, like, unfortunately, we training was on holiday for the group stage. Mm-hmm. So we needed, we had to get Callum to play mid. Um, I actually think our games went fine, though. We had Kimiko AD and Callum mid. Mm-hmm. Like, in our, our games before the tournament, I think they were fine. Like, I didn't think we were playing badly or anything. I think maybe our draft was not as flexible as it could have been because we have like an ADC player playing mid. Mm. But I think that's like expected. Yeah. So like going into the actual games against uh bomb planners. Mm-hmm. So like Flash's team. Um I feel like I could have played a bit better for sure. I feel like there were a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Like, not including we didn't have training. Yeah, for sure. That's a big mess, right? Like, a lot of your... Maybe not, like, say, if you're a five-star team with Craney, like, you maybe take a hit. Maybe you're a 4.8 or something like that. Like, the champion yeah. pool and stuff maybe hurts more than anything. But, I mean, Calum's a good player and he does play a lot of different champions. Yeah. It's just maybe... Some things that Craney has in his back pocket might suit better, or you know, yeah. And just even uh, like if you you've been an AD carry player for so long, n- no one like he probably has an idea of what a mid lane should do, but Craney will have like oh. the the ten percent extra, you know, n- nuance or whatever that can make a difference. So yeah, it's I suppose it and. With you guys having that, like your main player off, and then uh, bomb planners have like uh, the, disconnect, the disconnect, right? Like <laughs> that's a that's a lot of power, right? So, I mean, uh, there was like some things going on in that game with <clears throat> people playing different lanes, you know. Oh uh, yeah, that was a bit of a curveball. Yeah, they played. They swapped. The disconnect to top lane and Chris G played mid, was it or? Uh huh. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> we knew the disconnect played Riven, but we we thought it was mid, so we didn't ban it. Mm-hmm. So like we didn't think they would like just flex it, which is our fault. Um. Even then, the way that the game went, <clears throat> I wouldn't really say it was like that. Uh, you know, an obvious uh, one-sided game. Like, it, it went so yeah, long. Yeah. Was it not like an hour-long game or something like that? So yeah, it was, it was like over it was 60 a, minutes. A, <laughs> a knife edge, right? So it could have been any, either way, just whatever happens in the final fight, pretty much. So Yeah, I think, like, if anyone plays better, if anyone, like, plays slightly worse, mm-hmm. and the game's, like, over much quicker. Um, but, like... Yeah, it sucked. I think we we knew we had to win because we knew getting a win against Solitaire would be very unlikely considering how stacked the team was. Mm-hmm. And then the other team wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. So, like, we didn't really care about that game. Mm-hmm. Um, That's maybe one of the things, actually, like, about the way that tournament um, with the group stages, right? Like, you have... Group A who has maybe like two good teams and there's probably like one obvious favourite there, right, which would be reclusive. Then maybe mm-hmm. there's Glasgow Grizzlies who seem to underperform in Group A and then the other two teams yeah. are kinda like uh probably not gonna make it out, right? Like uh, yeah. Baby Bills seem to uh show up on a day and do well. So yeah, they they deserve to go through. But that it felt like a uh, group B was way more stacked. Like there's three teams there that could, like any one of them could really take the finals, right? Like that was so hard to to play through that. And, you know, it, it felt like a bit of a a shame that like one of the three teams had to basically go out. You know, at the start, right? Like it it would have been good to see like a uh, scalp. You know, play in the other bracket, right? And uh-huh. then scalping reclusive get to play, and then it seems more like there's a 
there's more chances to kind of prove how good each team is, right? Like rather than yeah. one team having to go out right right in the the group stages, and especially actually, it's one of the the, the kind of things that I was thinking about with that tournament is, um, it, they seem to be very short, right? The group stages were like was it only over like was it? It was like two days, one or day for like each group, yeah, yeah, because yeah. so, there were two groups, it was like one day each. Yeah, it seemed um, a bit kind of short. Like I, I wish they maybe like. If, if if they were going to, I don't know. I, I don't know how the organising went, but I kind of wish there was just maybe more games, like best of threes or something, you know, because there was a big yeah. gap between the the, the groups and the, you know, the, like, like the, the, the like yeah, knockout games. To, to the LAN event, right? There was like, I don't know, was it a month or two? Um, Yeah, maybe in a month. Yeah. Like, was, yeah. I, I have heard people say like, they wish the format was better, and mm. I agree. But like, I can understand because it's not like a, it's like a whole gaming event and not just mm. like a League of Legends one. Mm-hmm. So they they're not really they may not really be really familiar with them. Um, like uh, League tournament, like one ideal, f- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it sucks just... we lost, but like if we played better, then like we we should have played better if we wanted to win. Yeah, because it seemed like some of the other games like. Uh... You know, they they had games all the way up till the LAN final, or like, yeah. you know, I don't know if they maybe had a week break or something like that, but I don't know. That maybe it was just done familiarity with the game and the usual mm. formats and things. But yeah, and um, so yeah, you played against the Bomb Planters, and then is there any kind of key moments about that game that you recognise or that you think about? Ah. Uh... Udir is OP. Um, Udir is OP, yep. I think we had like a 6 item jinx. I ended up going like support items on Trundle. Mm-hmm. And we had a Janna on top. So I, I'm not sure how we lost the late game team fights with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's like a few key moments, but um, like people getting picked and people not being on the same page as each other, but mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I think we played worse in general compared to how we usually play mm. and they played better in my opinion. Mm. So, I mean, that's just how it is sometimes. What about, uh, so you, you knew Crane was on holiday, like how much practice did you guys get before uh, the tournament? Do you remember? Um, I think we got like two, two, three weeks. I want to say. Okay. Like I think most people were pretty relaxed, like with um not practicing. We we did get quite a few games in though, like flex queue. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did play pretty well. I think I think we like in those games we had the same idea you were on the same page so i don't know like i don't think people were like underestimating bomb players i think mm-hmm. everyone knew the game would have been was, was going to be like difficult but mm-hmm. i just think uh for whatever reason people played worse than they usually do okay, okay. and that happens like yeah yeah it can happen um what about kumikum how did you pick him up because he's uh, someone that I've, i haven't met or i don't know uh, he, um, I played against Kimikum during UKEO. Mm-hmm. He played, he played AD for London United. So I knew he was decent. He played on Viper after, mm-hmm. and then he became like a coach. Right. Um. He also went to like Glasgow Uni. So I think Callum has him on his friends list. So that's how we knew he was like Scottish or like uh, at least lived in Scotland mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, I just shot him a message, see if he was like interested, and then he ended up um becoming coach for Saltar. Right. Oh, one of the coaches for Saltar, not not like head coach. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I just like asked him if he wanted to play. 
and he said he was down. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, what about the next games? What about going into the Soul Tire game in SL5? Um, I think people were tired, which is understandable. It's like a, I think it was like a 65 minute long game. Yeah. Uh, maybe people were like tilted. Um, I knew it was going to be a rough game mm-hmm. because Crisis, Techie, and Boston are like mm-hmm. the big three. Mm-hmm. I still think that Donut's really good, and GG's like solid. Mm-hmm. So like, I think like Crisis, Techie, and Vossen are like way better than any other player in Scotland. Mm-hmm. You know, granted that Crisis and Vossen aren't Scottish, but like having that experience playing like third division, maybe even like second division, mm-hmm. um, I knew like Miles better than us. Like I remember. In the the flash interview, he said that Crisis doesn't know how to play efficiently. And I think I'm sure he does know how to play efficiently. I just think he doesn't want to. Like it's like saying, I think like every diamond jungler knows how to feel clear, you know. Like, but I think there's more to feel clearing. Mm-hmm. There's more to jungle than feel clearing. So, um. Yeah, that game was rough. Like we, we were doing okay at the start, but I think our draft did kind of suck. Where we had losing, we somehow drafted three losing matchups. Mm-hmm. So Crisis got to do whatever we wanted in my jungle, which kind of sucked. Which was a uh, definitely annoying when you're jungling and people are just like walking into your jungle and taking your camps, and you can't do much about it. Mm-hmm. But I mean. Uh, yeah, I think we we win that game like ten percent of the time, maybe. <coughs> I think they're just miles better than us. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? The drafters maybe a big impact in this one. Um, I think the draft could have been better, right? But uh, I still think they played almost bad. always lose against them. Yeah. Right, okay. Okay. Like I just think they're they're way better than us. Okay. Right. Right. And then, uh, like, so this is when you drop out of the, the tournament, right? Yeah, we've lost, and then we get to play a little consolation match against... I forgot the names, the other team. Let me see. And I, I, I have this somewhere. <laughs> well, I have we pretty it much somewhere. stopped them. Um, what are they? Week 2, SEL... So the steam frogs, the steam frogs, yeah. <laughs> Kiko the blue sorcerer, Liam Esto, Dova Keen, Martin S. I think they were kind of like a, you know, like a gold platinum team or something like that, if I remember. Yeah, I think their AD was bronze or like silver or something. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we a little consolation win for us there, <laughs> but um, I think. It's not surprising we lost, to be okay. honest. Um, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it happens. Like I'm, yeah. I've lost before. Like I'm not too fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm sure you will still play after that. Like, uh, still a strong team. Still have, you know, as much a chance as any of the other top teams at Scotland. So yeah, it was. It was just surprising. Like, the the team maybe a bit of a. Uh, expectation that you could be the favourites um, beforehand because you'd maybe won the last uh, SEL, but yeah. the landscape had changed quite a bit, right? There's a lot more people coming in, a lot more talent involved, so yeah, it was quite different. But what what about, like, uh, from being on the outside, what did you think about um, the rest of the tournament, how it played out and things like that? Uh, I think it's really surprising that Glasgow Uni, the Glasgow Grizzlies didn't win a single game. Mm-hmm. I think I played against the Heaven before, and we solid. Mm-hmm. Um, I think their jungler was like, "Oh boy, is the boy." Mm-hmm. I know he's supposed to be really good. I know Crawford said he's good, mm-hmm. and I think he's been master before. I kind of forgot the rest of the team, but yeah, watching that team play, 
made me think they were either like really tilted after losing to Reclusive or they didn't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like just seeing like like when they invaded and their mid laner was just like, just sitting in mid lane not helping the whole time. Mm. And they ended up getting wiped. It was definitely like, interesting. Yeah. Um Yeah, because yeah, it seemed like they were pretty stacked, right? Like you're talking about kind of Masters Diamond team, right? Like across the board. Yeah. I felt like. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the like so, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe it could be because, I mean, they were the first on stream and then they lose and then it just uh, it could be just the tilt, man. Oh, the tilt like they put up a good match against uh, Reclusive. Like it was pretty close, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So I thought they were... T I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would guess that they were tilted, but like I, I don't know for sure. Like I'm just assuming. Mm -hmm. Um, Reclusive looked pretty good. They were really close at beating bomb planners and mm -hmm. like the game where t um this night was on Malphite. Oh and, yeah, like, the Malphite like, clutches that... to like save the game. Yeah, which is yeah. pretty nuts. Um. So yeah, it's it's hard to tell how good reclusive are. I would like to see more of them. I think they're, I think their mid lane is definitely pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um. I think they had, like, full ADC as well. So, like, they weren't playing at full strength. So this is... Uh, Tasuka, Edu, Orsk, Chibi-chan, and Tino, right? Like, uh, yeah, Marsk yeah. seemed really good, man. Uh, I'm trying... I, I'm trying to remember some of the highlights, but, yeah, they look, definitely looked like the best team in uh, Group uh, A, right? Uh -huh. I remember... Tino on Rakan was not making the best plays in like the last game. I I'm guessing like maybe he got like really nervous and tilted or something, but mm -hmm. he was making some questionable plays. Like I'm sure he's a lot better than that. Mm -hmm. But I mean that it happens. Yeah. And like Saltire, I expect them to be the best team. I think they were clearly the best team. Mm -hmm. Like I think I got to play with Crisis, Vossen, and Techie like the week after. Mm -hmm. We lost to them. And not, not Crisis, sorry, because uh, just Vossen and Techie. Mm -hmm. And Vossen has like comms that I've never heard from a mid laner before. Like, it's like I remember <clears throat> when I played with Mirrod, he'd say, like, oh, this guy's dead. And like, he'd say, like, this guy's dead. Then, like, 30 seconds later, he'd kill him. Mm hmm. Which is like insane, but mm -hmm. um, Boston is like, yo, we have to kill this guy at like this time. This is only window to do this. It was very like, I've never had like a mid laner say these kind of comms. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think he's really smart. I don't think people realize how good they are. Like, I think flashy and and probably the rest of bomb players like underestimate how good Teggy. Boston, Tracers, and Donut are. Mm -hmm. Like, Donut... Like, I've been saying Donut's probably, like, is insane since uh, that random tournament we played. Um, I was saying to, like, Bomb players that Donut... I was saying to Chris G that Donut's, like, really good. And, I mean, I, I can't judge how good someone is in lane. I don't really watch that because I'm a jungler. Mm -hmm. But, like, getting to play with Donut, he's, like, super smart about the game. Um, and I think that's his, like his biggest strength for sure. So like he just, knows where to be at the right, yeah, like, at, the, at the right place in the right time. Big like bigger picture things you're talking about there, like uh, Boston's thing about time windows when if you make something happen, there's an opportunity opens and things like that. And maybe yeah. uh, Donut is um like thinking about the bigger picture macro and like. Where to be? Where, yeah. where do you need to make stuff happen and things like that? Interesting, right? Yeah, it's like they they all know their win cons. I think I think that's like the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But like they know what they need to do to win the game. Like I think, I think there were a few times in the finals where uh, they may have vented a little bit. Right. Just um, but I feel like they were always in control. Mm -hmm. Like the whole the whole time. 
like they weren't gonna lose in my opinion right okay yeah yeah it can yeah small slip ups can happen or you know minor misplays but you always felt like they adapted from these things to, to take it yeah okay yeah and then much. after that is this when you started playing with saltire and nlc um i was playing with them before it it's a it's like a weird window where i started playing nlc with techie mm-hmm. and then seo comes around and uh Techie wanted to play with his friends, or like they already agreed on it, mm-hmm. I guess, to, to play with Crisis Voss and Donut and mm-hmm. uh, Gigi. So we end up um, playing with Scalp, you know, like me, Kosh, Kimmy Kim Callum, Pazzy. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I would have liked to play with Techie. I think he's one of my favorite players to play with. I feel like a- aggressive he is. How he's always talking, like I think his comms are really, like really insane. Like he's definitely one of the more fun sports I've played with. Um, same thing with Donut. Like Donut's comms are really good. Where they're always like saying the right thing, you know, getting everyone on the same page, making sure everyone knows what's gonna happen and what they want to achieve, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, cool. And uh, what, what, like, are you, where are you in the NLC right now? What's, how have things been going? Uh, so, we played Calibrations, which is like a fancy way of saying like a Swiss kind of format, mm-hmm. where if you hit like a certain number of wins and you qualify for a certain division, uh, we end up. We had Yoon initially, top. Then, like, a few weeks before uh, the actual tournament thing, uh, we started playing with Donut. I think mm-hmm. it was, like, a week or two before. So we didn't have that much time with Donut, but um, <clears throat> we... I think it was seven games, and you need four wins to get Div 4, and we only got three. Right, okay. But we end up... Um, so we get Div 5, which I didn't know was a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we end up going undefeated in Div 5. So we've qualified for Div 4 now, but now we're just waiting to see like what's going to happen. Because, okay. um, yeah, there's some there's some rumors about UK Yale coming back, which oh, okay. I don't know if it's true or not. Right. It'd be cool to see if it's true. It, you know, it'd be cool to play now again and play against uh, a lot of the English guys that I used to play with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen, basically. Okay, because um, yeah, UKL and UKLC are just—is that UK and Ireland, or is it just only the UK? Uh, yeah, yeah. UK and Ireland, like, and then NLC is like everything from like uh, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, UK, Ireland. Is France included in that? Um, I think France have their own thing going on. LFL. Or yeah, and then else. they have like an open, they have like an open circuit or something for like the lower leagues. At least right. they used to when I when we scrimmed against them. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so it, it would be more kind of <clears throat> regional concentrated, and uh, it, I mean it, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Well, if you're like you're playing within your own country, and then like the NLC is pretty much like right below. The LEC, right? Like, so it's one of the kind of feeder regions for the LEC, right? Like, you have yeah, Fnatic, at least it used to be XL, like some of these teams around, right? Because I know really recently they um they like cut funding for NLC, and I think yeah. they made some they made some pretty big changes. I forgot what exactly, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I think it's not as What's the word? Like, not as strong or, like, powerful as it used to be. Right, Like, okay. important. Yeah, because, well, I guess is it... So, at the top, you've got LEC and EU Masters, and then, like, the like the regional leagues, like uh, Iberian Cup, LFL, NLC would maybe be in. Like, so it's maybe, like, third down, right, from yeah. Europe. It may, it may be, like, a tiny bit lower now, but... Mm-hmm. It may be fourth now, but... um. 
Yeah, I'll have to see how it plays out because people are saying like it's dead. Right. Like, the scene's probably like dead now, but um, I think people are still trying to make like a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just see what happens, I guess. So, yeah. It's uh, yeah. The more tournaments, the the better. Honestly, I, I'm uh, mm. even like uh, Belong. It's gone now. Like, or well, it's not gone, but yeah. the Glasgow store shut down. So. Yeah, I was kind of kind of hope that would come back soon as well. Because even though I was, I probably wasn't the strongest league in the UK, but there's still people that uh, dipped in and out of that and other uh, tournaments and stuff like that. So there's still like some talent. In it, so um, yeah. Okay, shall shall we move on to the next question? And I think you gave us a lot of your competitive history there. Um, when you're thinking about the game. What percentage of the game is about macro versus micro? Um, usually, personally, I think more about macro. I'd say okay. a percentage. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, usually, I think mechanically, I'm not. I'm not as good mechanically as I am. Like about uh, compared to like macro, mm -hmm. so at least when I play, I'm probably more. I probably think about macro more, so like sixty forty maybe. But I think micro is like way more important in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I think it's hard to teach like micro, right? Like it's hard to. It's kind of like if you have someone mechanically good, you can teach them about macro, mm -hmm. or you know. I could just play, with, you can get a guy to play with Taggy Fiend and like other guys who are really smart about the game and it cover their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Whereas if someone's like really good macro, but they're not great mechanically, then um, you know, it's harder to teach the, the mechanics, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. It's, it's like a pre baked, right? Or like a, you have it or you don't, sort of thing. Like, an yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what makes a good jungler? Uh, I know Flashy said, "Was it? What did he say? Like being efficient or something?" Mm -hmm. He was like alluding to that being really good. It's like I agree and disagree. Like I think being efficient is really good, but being able to know where you're needed, like on the map at the right time is really important. Like some some matchups are like really hard. Some lane matchups are really hard and you only have specific windows to um, help them. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if the enemy crashes way free and you can't do much until it bounces back from their tower. So it's gonna be a long time. Like, so if they crash way free, then way four, five, six, they're not in any danger. Um, so yeah, I think being being really smart, like, uh, it's weird. Like, Crisis, if we want to compare it back to Crisis, it's like, you know, maybe he does free camp gank because he knows that the pressure he's going to make is going to be more important than clearing the other camps. Mm -hmm. So kind of like just knowing what your team needs and how you can facilitate them is what i'd say mm -hmm. yeah paul's answer was kind of something along the line of yeah like being efficient in terms of taking camps but also uh, looking for opportunities so it's it's a, a kind of a stylistic question i guess because yeah, he'll play differently from how you play in Crisis. He'll play differently, and so on. So yeah, a lot of people have it's ideas. It's like um, there's a lot of times where I'll feel clear. Like in the past, I feel cleared, and like because I don't influence any lane, then the game is like way way more difficult because my team are effectively playing four v five kind of thing. Right. Okay. So like, even though. I I really enjoy like the full clear place though. I still know I'm aware there are a lot of weaknesses to it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of ways that you can be abused. Is this like a remnant of solo queue from 
uh, your Kazakh days, like you just it was effective at the time, and it meant that like you weren't relying on people who you yeah, would waste time so. on, and then that it would be given away anyway, right? You you can yeah. dictate, you can control everything in a way. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Okay. Um, anything else to say on that? Or do you want to move on to the next one? Uh, we can move on. I think yeah. I covered most things. Okay. Are there any players that inspire you? Um, like in the past, I was a big metaphor fan. He was like a NA jungler. I think when Tyler One had that has this like tournament. I forgot what it was called. The Tyler One Invitation mm-hmm. Series, maybe. Mm-hmm. 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 And then there was one season where uh Scara it's like Scara's um meme team with like Dyrus and all the X pros mm-hmm. got to the finals and played against um this like N E team. Um it was like a metaphor TF blade consensual clown I forgot the other two players. But like that uh, metaphor was like really good in my opinion. He was also a Kazakh player. He played Eve, which is where I started playing Eve from. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean now he's like a Warzone player, so I don't get to watch him anymore. Like for league stuff. Mm-hmm. But like at the time he was like a really big influence on like how I wanted to play the game. Um I think uh what's his name? Malice. Malice is like a full clear jungler, like people call him like a herbivore. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> I mean, because he's like kinda of PvE, a PvE kind of play style, but um I remember one season I think I was watching so much Malice where I became like really risk averse. Um and yeah, I didn't want to take any any plays, basically. But um there was like worlds in China at the time as well. So it's like Super Server. I and when I started watching the Super Server more, it was like or like Mid Beast, I guess. It was like I, I kinda realized that this playstyle isn't like it might be like the most efficient or whatever you want to call it, but I think it's like the one of the most boring ways to play the game, mm-hmm. even if it works. So like I'd rather flip just random fights. Not not random, but like, you know, like you know, let's flip this river fight and see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, let's flip this gank and see what happens. I think that kind of playstyle as long as you're conscious of what you're doing and not just like I'm um, every game something. for no yeah. reason. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Then I think that place does way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's calculated uh, like uh, calculated uh-huh. risk can pay off, and it can be massive, right? Like it might be low risk for you, but uh, you know, you, you, so it's like low risk. Uh, maybe some like some reward. It may not be high reward, but maybe it's something that makes yeah. an incremental advantage, or you know, something like that. So yeah, there's. There's balance to things, right? Like you can take the safe route, but you know it's not always. It's not always just gonna. You're you're not just gonna cruise like the tortoise over the finish line. Like sometimes mm. you need to take the, like the the calculated risk or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Like I'd rather have the game in my hands, even if I, you know, if I'm the one who loses the game for us. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have that than like not have. As much of an impact and like still lose. Mm-hmm. For sure, yeah. Being a top laner or something, uh, that's how I feel like you. There's some matchups that you just don't want to give a kill away or do anything, and sometimes you just feel like you're just along for the ride. And <laughs> you can't mm. really influence so much. So, uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. And and uh, when you mentioned about the super server, was there any? junglers that you noticed from uh, China that like you thought were really good? Um, I forgot what words that was. I remember SOFM was mm. really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. 
I think he's like Vietnamese or Thai. I don't know what he is. Was this the Sunning um, team? Was that that team? Uh, I think so. Yeah. But I remember he'd play Olaf and have all these like weird. Um, he'd do these weird things. Like he used to go biscuits on Olaf, mm-hmm. which was like wasn't necessary. But then like he'd sell them, so he can get like CDR bits and on his first clear. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's a guy who made like Redemption Olaf a thing. Um, yeah, so like, he was a big influence when I played on Demise Academy. Mm-hmm. I think I randomly picked up Olaf. I don't know why. I don't think it was off him, but like, he was definitely someone I I looked at to see like what kind of clear he'd do, what items he'd go, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, are there any mice, keyboards, other peripherals, accessories you swear by? Um, I don't think so. Uh, the only thing I like is having like a small mouse mm-hmm. because I have like small hands. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, after I got rid of my old mouse, I got like a normal size mouse and mm. it just felt kind of weird to play with. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It didn't feel yeah. comfortable. Right, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually... Do you know who Rocket Jump Ninja is? Have you heard about this guy? Oh, it sounds familiar. Yeah, he he does, like, mice reviews. He's, like, reviewed every mouse. And then he also has, like, it's kind of like a, a size guide thing, like, where you measure mm-hmm. your hand, like, the height and width of your hand, and then he recommends, like, what size a mouse you should go for and stuff. It's really good, man. I, I, every... Mouse that I've bought, like, since seeing this guy, he's been on the money sort of thing, like, in terms of comfort. Because I, I use a small mouse as well. I use I, I use a Logitech is that a G203 or something like that, and then I've got a Viper Mini, and these were kind of, like, what he no, recommended. I mean, I've had both of those, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think I had the Logitech 303, yeah. and then I've got, like, a Viper Mini right now. Yeah, the Viper Mini is so good, man. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, it's uh, we're on to the highlight section. Uh, do you want to open up the watch together? Yeah. I'll, I'll need to swap the scene. Okay. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Right. Okay, it's working. Um, it's up to you if. We, well, I just play it through and you can talk about it yeah, you on can. another playthrough or it's up to you. Yeah, I'll just talk about it after, I guess. Yeah, sure. Caesar. Right now. Next is... Uh, right now. Next is... It looks like Red is going to so close. Oh the blue God, Nexus so close. Red 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 red. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> there was less than 10% left on the Red Nexus as a night, was... night Nine and JoJo. The fact it came that close oh. at the end of a game between the two teams. Oh, that is stylish. That double TP. God. Uh, I think I clipped it a bit early. Oh, is no, it? a bit late, sorry. That's yeah. okay. Because there was like a, a TP. Um, we were like 3v5 against Realm Gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to 1v5 defend the base. I think it was 5 at least. Maybe it was 4. I can't mm-hmm. remember. Um, and then I think Slated called for the double TP on into the enemy base. Mm-hmm. I think Jojo TPs on the bot wave or something, and in comms were like, uh not you know like people were kind of you could tell people were like a bit annoyed to TP to the wrong menu. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, like okay. oh maybe that's gonna cost us a game. Right, right. But uh, thankfully we won. If I think if we lost that game, we would have been out the whole tournament. Oh man. Um, because we were one 0 down. So, so what, yeah, like, how, how how far into the tournament was this? Was was this like midway? Or? Uh, this was so you had to win. I can't remember exactly. You had to win three best of threes to qualify for like the the top four teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was game two of those three games. Right. Okay. But like, if you lost any, if you lost any of the best of threes, you were just out oh, completely. Right. Right, right. Okay, so there's a lot of stake in the game, man. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I move on to the next clip. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Same again. I'll just play it through, and then we can talk. Yeah, same afterwards. again works. Yeah. And I'm turning towards the Baron, but it's taken a while. Five minutes ago, Heathen couldn't catch a cold. All of a sudden, he catches everyone. This Baron's down to two and a half thousand health. It's still being shredded through, but there's mixed targets coming through. Victoria's going to get picked off. Kurosh is able to secure this one. And we're seeing Udis steal the, the Baron away for the Mize. And now the fight is going very much in favour of the team who have just secured the big old purple buff. Re and now turning towards the... Oh. Yeah, so this game... This That's game was, um, <laughs> uh, what was it? The first game of playoffs, and we had lost two games back to back mm -hmm. from, um, group stage. And like, I swear, we were losing like every scrim pretty much. Mm -hmm. I think we were winning like 20% of our scrims. Um, so yeah, it was a bit rough. I think we lost the first game to London United as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, this was like game two of that series and if we lost that we would have been in the lower bracket i forgot where exactly mm -hmm. but um yeah like stealing that baron was i remember when i stole it i, I think fu like screamed i think <laughs> like everyone's like, pretty hyped that i stole it because they knew like you know we actually have a chance to win and mm -hmm. not get knocked out mm -hmm. well, so yeah like that was deaths. pretty hype i mean the gold looks uh, close but was it just yeah the, the gold was even up? i think they're, they're yeah. Daft or something. yeah, like I think their team outscales us. Mm -hmm. It looks like it, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like I think just getting like confidence back. I think you know after losing that many scrims and that many officials, mm -hmm. and like being like the favorites to win the whole split to potentially just losing the game here. Mm. Um, yeah, I think like stealing this Baron gave us like a lot of momentum, not only for this series but like the next one we played. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was pretty hype. But yeah, actually, there's some names, a lot of names in this game actually I recognize, like Victorio. Actually, no, I think I played against Articuno and Belong, Kumikum mm -hmm. from uh, SEL Five, the Heathen. Uh, he's the Glasgow Grizzlies guy, right? I I've yeah. seen him recognize him. I, I feel like I've seen him before somewhere. Um, little pants for you. I I don't know. You mentioned Kerosh before, but I I don't know him. Recognize him or typical, but yeah, for sure a few names mm -hmm. that I've seen before. Okay, well I'll go to the next clip. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, Kate. Can we win the fight? Yeah. Let's fight together. Uh, oh my oh, god. Wait, don't, 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 don't. You have a quirky. Nah. How did that fucking happen? Can you just I fucking... <laughs> yeah, so this is a pretty iconic quote from Morgan. <laughs> uh, I was actually so annoyed this game. Because we're playing against like silver gold players, I think. Okay. And like we're we're actually just like losing to them for some reason. <laughs> but um Yeah, classic backwards quirky package. <laughs> Happens sometimes. <laughs> I've seen, there is some buggy abilities. Like I, I don't know. Let's give the benefit of the doubt and say it was uh, a glitch, right? Because I've seen yeah. it before. I've seen when I like uh, when I've been playing Cled, and I've tried to ult, and it just goes the opposite direction before. So oh. that there is some buggy abilities like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said just... he he accidentally hovered his mini map. Oh. <laughs> Like, which which makes sense, which is unfortunate. <laughs> oh man, oh, poor guy, poor Morgan. Hey, okay, what's the next questions? Okay, we're on to the personal question section now. Leon hasn't seen any of these or heard of, heard of any of these beforehand. So, first question: ganking or full clearing? Uh, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> depends who my teammates are. All right, okay. <laughs> uh, I would lean towards ganking most of the time. Okay. I think uh, I would say ganking is better, but if my teammates are worse, then I'll feel clear. All right, okay. <laughs> right, number two. <clears throat> I know you're a big gym goer. 
and you've been posting a lot of your lifts. Oh wait, actually, hang on, I need to swap scenes. <laughs> I'm on the wrong scene. Okay, there we go. We're on the right scene. I know you're a big gym goer. You've been posting a lot of your lifts online. How long before you take over from Tristan Lee as the number one Asian fitness YouTuber? Uh, that's gonna be a long, a long time. <laughs> I could, I could be like the next League of Legends Tristan Lee, maybe. Okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> like uh, in terms of like uh, YouTube and fitness uh, YouTubers and stuff like that, is there anyone that you follow or anyone that you think uh, like motivates you to go to the gym? Oh, there's so many. Uh, I like Chris Bumstead a lot. Yeah, he's he's master of like yeah, right? Is he? Yeah, yeah. Just just won it like four times in a row. Just won it a few days ago this weekend or mm. last weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did I watch? I mean, it depends who I'm what I'm watching for. If it's like content kind of thing, mm -hmm. I like Jesse James West for like kind of like entertainment. Oh, he does stuff. kind of like different things like collabs a lot and oh. stuff like that right like so yeah, you yeah. work out with the mountain and then someone else the next day right mm -hmm. yeah yeah he's a good uh, i used to be into strongman stuff quite a bit like um i think like a few months ago we went to see giants live that was pretty cool right. it was in like glasgow okay um <clears throat> so i used to watch like brian shaw a lot eddie hall a little bit but he's mm -hmm. a bit uh Sometimes his personality is a bit kind of not for me. Yeah. Um. I, I mainly bodybuilding stuff. So like Max Tuning, uh, Christian Guzman, and like Jeff Nippert are probably the big three that I watch. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Next question. <laughs> how did How did you get into the Roblox game? Collect all pets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coach. What, what was it? Our coach would talk about it a lot. That was it. Um, <laughs> and then, I mean, I used to think Roblox was pretty cringe. I think mean, most people do. <laughs> like, it's a kid's game. Yeah. But, unironically, there are. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> such a dog. <laughs> unironically, there are, there are quite a few good games. Like, I remember me. Me, Crawford, and Callum were playing like this cheese game right. where you need to get this cheese, but there was like a big, there was like giant mouse that would chase you or okay. giant rat. And if it caught you, like you'd die. Right. <laughs> like it's like so dumb. Um, is yeah, this she's fault? Is this like lockdown times? Is this like a board of league, a board of whatever other games that coach is sitting playing Roblox and you're like, oh. You know what? I'll give it a shot uh, once. <laughs> it may have been. I remember the first thing we played. It was we played like cops and robbers. Right. Okay. I think. Co like coach said, it was like really good, and we were like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And I mean, it was pretty funny. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I will say that. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those games. Like I remember playing like Gary's Mod when I was younger and things like that, where it's just kind of yeah. like a sandbox game. And, like, yeah. I don't know, I, I used to just, like, making things on it, or Minecraft making things, but Roblox is a bit different. Like, I, I haven't played it, but, like, it just seems like one of those things where people, yeah, just come up with random stuff. There'll, there'll be, like, yeah. uh, stuff that's really for kids, and then there's stuff that's a bit more kind of thought in the, like involved in it. Like, so, so is this Collect All Pets, is it kind of, like, Pokemon or something like that. Like I, I have no idea. <laughs> like how would you describe it? It's it's like an idle game, I would say. Right, so like a like, clicker game, like you just click. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like I'll just play, I'll have it. Like most times, like I remember Coach would play like Clicker Heroes or some something, mm -hmm. and like I remember I used to play like years ago. So then when he did say it, I was like, okay, I'll just hop on again because mm -hmm. I used to play this game. Um. But, like, most of the time, it's just good. Like, I remember I'd go to work. I'd have it on my phone. Mm -hmm. Like, on my... Yeah, on my phone. So, I'd go into work, because I didn't get to work with anyone. Mm -hmm. So, I'd, I'd just work solo. I'd hide it in a little drawer, in case, like, the cameras could see. And I'd just, like, have it open. 
And then I'd like, like in between seven customers or something, I'd like just check on and be like, okay, I'll just, you know, upgrade this thing. <laughs> I'll go back to it. I, I, just, I just like kept me sane. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Leon. Um, no worries. Do you want to uh, link any socials or anything? What's best to get you on? Uh, I have Twitter. I forgot what my at is. I think it's like Leon underscore K6 okay. or something. Right, I'll, That's probably I'll, like the best way to get me. Yeah, I can link in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, man. Good chatting with no you again. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, if you could, if everyone could like and subscribe, share, uh, follow on Twitter if you can, be really appreciated. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Cheers.